Yeah, a little bit I did do uh, just getting started with it. I uh, I was able to download a floor plan into the product. Um, it was a two-story, and I was able to um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, layer them. I guess that's the word mm -hmm. correctly. Uh, I was the product was pretty pretty basic as far as um, you know using it. It was it was pretty pretty easy. Um, Except for the fact that uh, drawing vertical lines, I was having issues with. Okay. And I did really didn't notice in the in the manual or the uh, the help portion of any kind of workflow, a typical workflow for the product. Right. Right. Well, I guess the reason for that is there there are so many uh, ways to to use it, um, and there's no particular uh, order that you have to do things in except that if you're going to of course if you're going to bring in a um, graphic file to use as in the background that has to be done in in order uh, that has to be done first and yes. I'll, I'll go ahead and bring one in now and uh, let's see We'll go ahead and use the example that comes with it. Okay, and I'll import. I'll click import. In in this screen, you have the opportunity to um, to rotate it if you need to, and we'll just use it as is. Okay. Um, click import, and we're working. Currently, we're working on um, giving the user the ability to import just a portion of that uh, file. So you just uh, you can frame out what you want to import and just import that portion, and that that's going to be helpful. Where you have a huge plan, it may have different um, it may have different layers on the same page where you want to do uh, just part of a page. But currently, we have to import the whole file. This this is uh, where you, and you may already know this, this is where you, you set the scale for yes. the uh, graphic that you, you uh, that we just imported. And I'm just going to zoom in so that I can see that dimension. And the, that dimension that I'm going to use is up here at the top, and it's 54 feet. Now I'm just going to start a line. It's already set on line. I'm going to start a line over here at the left and press the left mouse button and bring it on across and stop it at the end of that 54 feet. And then I, I type in 54 feet and it's zero inches. So then I just click OK or I can press Enter. And there it is. Uh, so now let's bring in the next story. I switch from floor level zero to one. And I'm going to import a graphic from file, and we'll go to the next floor and import that. And it's going to use the same scale that we used on the previous page. Um, so, and that is already aligned for us. But in many cases, you may have to align that, which simply means you click over here to the align image button and then you can drag that plan around and okay okay uh, or you can click align image and you can use the the uh, arrow buttons on the keyboard either one to, okay, to you. Um, now if we're going to to use that it's helpful to uh, to draw a couple of lines here at a uh, to represent a common point and so that's going to be the upper left corner of the plan then I'll go to the next floor and here are my lines here and I can align the next floor using those uh, two two lines and the oh. arrow, arrow keys on the keyboard and that that's pretty pretty close there. That's about it right there. And uh, then just click anywhere on the plan, and it'll save it. 
and you'll be back in normal mode. And that's okay. that's pretty much a line there. And the same holds true for the subsequent floors as you work your way up to the top. Um, and then at that point, uh, typically I would begin by drawing some walls. Um, and you just use the left mouse button, click on the wall uh, option button, and then just overlay the walls on the plan. And uh, you're only concerned with the wall, the outside walls, and any plumbing walls. Okay. That's really all we need. Now it doesn't matter what the the size of the wall is two by four two by six two by eight yes it does you and you would set that here let's say we want to do a two by six wall we'll just use the drop down uh, list and we'll select a five and a half six inch nominal five and a half actual size and you just draw your wall that way and you can change the width of a wall by highlighting it first and then just go to the the, wall, the size that you want, and it'll it'll uh, automatically resize the wall. Or if you, you wanted. Can, mm -hmm. Excuse me. I noticed that you'd only go up to six inch. What if it was an eight inch wall, or you just know, type eight? Okay, it'll just go right in. Hit enter, and it'll. You can override this. This is just a list of common sizes. You can I type see. eight or ten or whatever you want, and it'll it'll resize that wall, and and all subsequent walls will be the same size until you change that. Gotcha. Okay, well, let's go back down to, uh, let's go carry that back down to a three and a half inch wall. I don't know that this plan has any six inch walls. I don't see any right off. So uh, okay. a lot of times a washer and dryer will be on a six inch wall. Yeah, so you can, you can make that bigger. And, um, and let's see, let's set it back to three and a half. And okay, so I notice you just go straight through the doorways. So are you are you called uh, bounding the room? Like you would, uh, I notice that you're pretty similar to the uh, Revit, um, the MEP. Mm -hmm. Some of this you have, you're more, you make it more user friendly than what they have. They're a little more complicated. I'm not sure what the term bounding the room means exactly. Um, I haven't studied Revit. Um, but what I'm doing is uh, I'm drawing the outside walls because I'm going to use them as a reference for uh, placing my fixtures, especially in the case of uh, a slab construction because uh, on a concrete slab, typically uh, the forms will match the edge of the outside walls. And mm -hmm. when I'm laying out my fixtures, I won't have anything there to work off of but the forms or possibly even <clears throat> nothing but strings to represent the outside walls. Yes. Um, in this area, we typically do have forms. And... Um, and I'll show you one of the features that we that we have is uh, the ability to uh, give dimensions from uh, the dimension or reference lines. Um, let's uh, let me go ahead and finish off these walls real quick, and and then I'll move on to that phase of it. I think I've got a plumbing wall here at the kitchen sink, and and that's about it. Uh, that's about all the walls I need there. Um, and I can turn the graphics on and off. You can select View Graphics, and you can you can get rid of them. Right now, we'll leave them on for placing fixtures. And to place a fixture, I just click on the fixture and and drag it over to the area that I want it and I can zoom in by using the right mouse button and to change that fixture I just double click it and I can go uh, going up to a different size fixture okay. and it'll resize it that way let me just 
make a change here. I'm going to use sample customer because their selections are already loaded. And okay, let's say I want to place a tub. Well, that's obviously not the right tub, so I can click anywhere <clears throat> on that tub, double click, and then I can select from a list of other tubs. And once I find the one that I want, I can rotate it by clicking in the uh, circle with the double arrows. And uh, it will give me the ability to rotate. Once I'm done rotating, I just release and click. Well, while it's still highlighted, I can click anywhere in that fixture and drag it into the corner. I can also fine tune it by highlighting it and using the arrow keys. Each each click is I need to turn that off. Each click is a quarter inch, and you can you can fine tune it and get it right in the corner where you want it, or you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Um, when we get zoomed in, we can see exactly where that corner is. Uh, so just to to move on, I'll go ahead and place a couple more fixtures and we'll make that a we'll make that a 48 inch cabinet there and then we'll bring in a water closet and now I mentioned the reference lines and they're kind of neat because um, the fixtures will uh, automatically draw dimension lines over to all the reference lines on your plan. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. Um, let's turn the graphics off for now so that we can see a little better. These uh, these lines here are reference lines, but we won't need them any, any longer, so I'll delete those. And let's say well, I'll just draw a reference line out here and one out here. And they can represent anything you want. Typically, they'd represent uh, a form or something that you're going to measure off of. Um, and when we bring a fixture out onto the plan, you can see the dimension lines are constantly updated. Um, and dimensions are given to those reference lines. The, this is only occurs while that fixture is highlighted, uh, and you can move the fixture around, and you can see the uh, reference line or lines are updated. Um, so we'll get rid of that. Now these reference lines, in many cases, uh, represent the forms, and the forms uh, many times are uh, even with the outside of these walls. So we have a built-in option that allows you to snap those reference lines uh, right against the wall. Um, and here's the little uh, option box or dialog box. And it asks me if I want to snap that line to the wall. If I click yes, it'll bring that line right up against the wall. And um, that only occurs when you start your reference line even or close to the end of a wall. So it's not going to be a nuisance for you if you're trying to draw reference lines that are independent of a wall. So we'll uh, we'll click yes in that case, and we can go on and continue those. And so the idea is that those lines 